In this problem, we're told a certain orthodontist uses a wire brace to align a patient's crooked teeth as in this figure. The tension in the wire is adjusted to have a magnitude of 18 newtons. Find the magnitude of the net force exerted by the wire on the crooked teeth. Right, so this is the image from uh, the book, right? So we have these teeth and we have these tension forces, one going this way and one going this way on this teeth. And we're trying to find the net, uh, the magnitude of the net force, right? So we know these tension, and so the tension in each of these, the tension force is equal to 18 newtons. Right, so how do we solve this problem? So the way we're going to solve it is by taking uh, the sum of the forces in each direction, and you'll see how it works. So we're going to take the sum of the forces in the x and the sum of the forces in the y. Right, so let's start with the x. So this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So if we want to take the sum of the forces in the x, we have to find the x component of this tension force, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So what you want to do is imagine it like a triangle. So if we want to find the x component, right, I'm labeling this x, right, so this is x, this is x. And then this part will be the y, where I'm drawing uh, the line right now. Hopefully you can see that. But yeah, so what we want to do is find x, right? So if we look at it like this, right, this triangle is essentially uh, this triangle right here, right? So this angle is uh, this angle in this triangle, right? T is going to be the hypotenuse, this length right here. So we label this T. And then x is just the adjacent side to the angle, which is this side right here, right? And, and we're trying to solve for x. So how do we find x? So we use trig. So we know the cosine of an angle right? In this case, it's 14 degrees is equal to uh, the adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So katoa. So adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is x, the hypotenuse is t. If you multiply both sides by t, you'll get x equals t times the cosine of 14, okay? So we know this is t times the cosine of 14. And right, keep in mind, these are the same angles, meaning this is also going to be t times the cosine of uh, 14, right? But notice they're in different directions. So one is going to be positive and one's going to be negative. So when you take the sum of the forces, right, we're going to say right is positive, left's negative. So if we say we add the force, right, the one on this side, right, which is this one, and then on the left side, it's going to be uh, minus, right, because it's going the other way. So t times the cosine of 14, which you should notice, if we're minusing the same thing from itself, it's just equal to zero. So the sum of the forces in the x direction are just going to be equal to zero. They're basically going to cancel each other out, right? So uh, just keep that in mind. They're going to cancel each other out for this one. So we actually don't have to worry about that, okay? So... Uh, Let's go ahead and do the y now. So we're going to take the sum of the forces in the y. So in the y, it's going to be a bit different, right? And you should realize that because this force is going this way. Both of them are going down. Instead of going in opposite directions, they're both going down, meaning we're actually going to get a number. So how do we find the y? So if I label this the y, right, which is what we're solving for, the y component, we can use sine. So the sine of an angle, in this case 14, is equal to what? It's equal to uh, the opposite over hypotenuse, right? So Katoa. So the opposite is y divided by t. It's just going to be multiply both sides by t. The y component is t times the sine of 14, right? But keep in mind, they're both going down, right? Because up is positive, down is negative. So it's going to be minus, right? Minus t times the sine of 14 is 1. And then the other one is minus t times the sine of 14, right? And so what you should notice, right? These are the same thing. So really, this just comes out to minus 2t times the sine of 14, Okay. And then we know the variable t, right? t is just going to be 18. So if we want to solve, we can just plug in 18. Minus 2 times 18 times the sine of 14, right? So you want to plug this in your calculator, right? Minus 2, multiply that by 18 times the sine of 14. So the sum of the forces in the y are going to be equal to minus 8.71, but keep in mind they want the magnitude of it. So this just indicates the direction. So when they ask for the magnitude, they just want the positive value. That's essentially what that means. You just take the absolute value of your thing. So in this case, the net force, right, in the y direction, it's only going to be in the y, is 8.71 newtons, right? There's none in the x, so we actually don't have to take the resultant, but it's just going to be 8.71 newtons, right? So uh, yeah, that's going to be the net force and your answer to this problem. And so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.